All right, I'm doing another training session today with some commentary in between sets. I'm gonna answer some questions too. What I have for the training session today is about 10 to 15 minutes of max approach jumps. And after the approach jumps, I got some power cleans. I'm probably just gonna hit a couple of singles. And then after the power cleans, I'm gonna do some box squats. I just have one AMRAP set. I have absolutely no idea how much weight I wanna use. I do wanna use a weight that I can hit somewhere between like eight and 10 reps though. But I just got back from vacation. I was in Tennessee with my family, so I didn't eat very well. We'll just kind of see how the day goes. To finish off the training session, I'm gonna do true Zercher deadlifts. The bar is gonna start on the floor. I'm gonna crouch down, get the curves of my elbows in the bar and stand up with it. And one more thing before I start the training session is I'm now starting the carnivore diet. I'm not telling you that because I expect anybody to care. It's more so to hold myself accountable because if I put it on camera, then I have to do it. That way I can kind of bully myself into doing it, kind of the Austin Yoakum method. It's not gonna be a true carnivore diet. It's basically just going to be all animal products so eggs meat cheese milk I'll occasionally use a whey protein shake if i need something out of convenience oh, that's what i got let's get to the training All right, so the first question is, what cues do I like to use for people when I'm teaching them how to clean and snatch? This person says that they're having problems actually making contact high in the thigh, and they feel like they're just kind of muscle pulling it instead of actually deriving power from triple extension with their legs. So for this specific question, there's two cues I like to use. The first one is to pull up your shorts with the bar, so you wanna make contact with the bar high in the thigh so that it actually physically pulls up your shorts. The second cue is a pretty common cue, which is just like, have long arms, I say long arms. You'll hear the cue, the power ends when the arms bend. Some people like that cue, some people don't. I think it's fine for a lot of people. And then a good drill for these people I like is just no contact cleans and no contact snatches. You're not making any contact with the bar on your thigh, it's gonna feel really fucking heavy. So you do a few reps where you intentionally don't make contact with the bar. Later on when you do intentionally make contact with the bar, the bar is gonna feel so much lighter. A really good follow on Instagram is Brandon Akari for Olympic weightlifting advice, so I suggest you follow him. Yeah, cleans feel pretty heavy today. That was just 140, I'm gonna do 150 next. I'll probably do another one at 160 after this, depending on how it feels. Probably just stick at 160 for a couple of singles. Next question I got is if I could pick three core movements that would transfer best to sports, what would I pick? So the way I would answer this question is that there's not a specific core movement that's gonna transfer best to like certain sports. You could maybe make the case for like, Various uh, core movements in which you're rotating the spine could be more beneficial for someone like a wrestler or combat sports or an offensive lineman, someone who gets like into the trenches with people, but it's all general physical preparation anyways. But if I'm gonna pick my three favorite core movements, I'm definitely gonna pick just like a weighted sit up. I'm gonna pick an oblique sit up, so one where you're like off the bench, someone's sitting on your hip. You're on your side, you rotate your chest down to the floor and on your way back up, you rotate your chest up to the ceiling. My third core exercise that I would choose is probably gonna be a kneeling cable crunch or uh, standing or kneeling side bend. One's a way to sit up, two is an oblique sit up, three A is a kneeling cable crunch, three B is a side bend. <laughs> Yep, didn't have 160 today. Usually I can power 170. Not today, I guess. All right, quick answer to a question right before I do my last set here. The question is, will long distance running impair or inhibit speed improvements or twitchiness for sports? Short answer is no. I think it's probably good for most people, pretty much everybody, to do some sort of steady, steady state conditioning at least once or twice per week, including athletes, including like basketball players, football players, power dominant athletes. As long as you're still sprinting, as long as you're still doing piles and doing athletic stuff, doing a little bit of steady state aerobic conditioning is not going to have any negative side effects to your athletic improvement. Now, if you dose it inappropriately, it could have negative side effects, but that would be if you're like running miles upon miles without doing much or any speed or flyover in your training anyways. But I do steady state conditioning. I'll even run like three to five miles on a given day, but I still do speed work and plyos one to two times per week too, so it doesn't really affect me. Short answer is no. Long answer is yes, if it's dosed inappropriately. <laughs> Okay, 
last thing of the day, Zercher deadlifts. I have no idea what a good weight is to use. I'm gonna do a few warm up sets at 225 and just progressively add low till I feel like it'd be a good weight. Before I start, I got one more question about like, what are some good books that I would suggest reading if you wanna increase your training knowledge? So there's a few books that come to mind. So like the Chris Beardsley books, there's a hypertrophy book and a book by him, I think it's called Strength is Specific. Both really good books, I got a lot of value out of them. Two books that I think are really underrated and a lot of people like to make fun of because it's Mark Ripito is Starting Strength and Practical Programming, both by Mark Ripito. Uh, Awesome books, honestly. I don't think there's a single book out there better than Starting Strength at explaining the biomechanics and the anatomy of why you should lift weights the way that he teaches you to lift weights. So definitely recommend Starting Strength and Practical Programming. Those books are great for people who are just like trying to learn for the first time. And I think they're really good for people who already have some training knowledge too. Uh, Christian Thibodeau has a book, it's called like The Little Little Black Book of Secrets or something like that, I think it's really good. I think Christian Thibodeau is a really good resource for a lot of people. If you follow Atlas Power Shrugged at all on Instagram, he just put out a new product that's called Old Time Strongman, I think. It's a really extensive ebook. It's probably the most extensive ebook I've ever seen. I'm gonna do a book review on it, actually. I told him about that. Lastly, I can't answer this question without plugging my stuff. So I got my Launch 2.0 ebook, I got the Haas Project ebook, and I got the Haas Olympic ebook. All three of them discuss training from a little bit of a different angle. The Haas Project angle is about strength and hypertrophy. The Haas Olympic angle is about why and how to incorporate Olympic lifts into your training if you still want to be athletic and, and you're not using Olympic lifts necessarily to compete in Olympic weightlifting. That's probably my best product, I think. All right, not the best for the strongest session for me, but eh, it's one of those days, that's all right. That's how it goes sometimes. Appreciate you watching, I'll see you next video.